is Ed Thomas. I'm a poet. And I bring to you a demonstration of the people who created the world. Many people lose sight of the fact that it was Africans who established the civilization of the world. Spoken word is not a new phenomenon. It has been practiced for millenniums. Back in Africa, during the Golden Age, the Classic Age, it was known as the Griot, who was given the history, the custom, the traditions of the people, and he passed it down from generation to generation orally. Well, this same gift is presented today in the form of the spoken word and the poet. And today, I have such a demonstration. For it is our children. They are the blessing of our lives. They are the living embodiment of the future. They are the future, knocking at the doors of the present. They are sacred. We should defend our children the way many of us defend our religions. For with them, we represent continuity, the living, the dead, the unborn. So taught our sages over 10,000 years ago, when we taught the world civilization. Now, we built mighty pyramids, temples two miles wide by a half mile wide, housing over 80,000 students, a sacred university, because knowledge, like our children, was sacred then. In Karnak, in the royal city Waset, the queen city of many cities, Abydos, Busadas, Dendada, Sas, Saqqara, Memphis, Amarna, all sacred, splendid, highly populated in the classic age when our great masters taught geometry, medicine, chemistry, algebra, astronomy, trigonometry, engineering, philosophy, music, all the bases of civilization in Africa, in Kemet, the black land, where we built Haramakan, they called the Sphinx. The great pyramids at Giza charted the stars and led mankind into new roads and into bright tomorrows. Now, we were a handsome people, all the rainbow tones of the sepa spectrum, glowing amber, copper, teak, mahogany, ebony, indigo, to clean lacanito, nature's peacocks, fresh from Uganda, Kenya, Tanzania, the Great Lake regions of the sacred south, Africa, the cradle land of man. Now, we loved ourselves, for we're not the Kimites, the Cushites, the world's first great men and women, those of dark skin, kinky hair, full generous features, builders of civilizations and the parents of humanity. That great sun is set, but the scarlet glow of its splendor lives on in the myths and the legends of the world, where once there was a golden regal people, black as night, who harnessed minds to divinity, grew mightily, became godlike, named the stars and planets, performed miracles, raised the dead, harnessed nature's laws, and explored the depths of the human mind discovered higher laws, esoteric, known as magic by the ignorant, discovered time, the calendar, organized our years, our months, our days, stood us solidly upon human feet, fully conscious of this awesome heritage, then sent us out to sanctify the earth. But that great day is past. The cradle land Africa was overrun by aliens, Persians, Greeks, Romans, Arabs, hungry peoples who sought to rape the motherland, generous in her wisdom and mystical love, for baubles such as copper, gold, diamonds, and oils, when the greatest treasure of all is humanity. Slavery abounded, our temples sacked, our cities plundered, our libraries were trashed. Were these Greco-Roman pimps sold progress and philosophy to a developing world and then had the audacity to claim those Ethiopian maidens as products of their degenerate mentality? Later, migrating south into Nubia and beyond into the interior of the continent, her children sought to rebuild upon the foundations of their heritage, set up other empires, Kush, Carthage, Ghana, Mali, Sunye, Kenimbunu, Ndogo, Ashante, Zimbabwe, and a galaxy of many others, all seeking to create that golden age, that golden land, recreate the cities of legendary learning that was sacred, like our children, who should be defended like our religions forevermore. Now our new beginnings lasted many centuries, past the Middle Ages, and the legends begin again, the wealth of Mali, Ethiopia and Prester John, the learning sages of Jene and Timbuktu, Masons, master scholars, Maribas architects from Zimbabwe to Moorish Spain, and the cities begin again, Gao, Ninani, Kilwa, Fez, Marchek, Amobe, Darhambe, Dar es Salaam, Kumbi Saleh, and many, many more.
but the legends and the wealth, they attracted new marauders. North European pirates descending from Visigoths and Vikings, now known as Frenchmen, Englishmen, Germans, Belgians, and Dutch. And as before, they were attracted like vampires to the copper, to the gold, to the diamonds, to the oils, to the rubber, and to the most treacherous wealth of all, black gold, human flesh. Now, aided by traitor chiefs, renegades who sold their own people for firearm, liquor, and cheap trinkets, 30 pieces of silver, new Judases engaged in slave raids, or they served as the guides for the slave raiding pirates, disguised as Elizabethan gentlemen, hard on Shakespearean etiquette. Flowered handkerchiefs perfumed to sweeten the air, filled with the blood, the sweat, the feces, the odors of genocide, as over 100 million Africans suffered mankind's greatest holocaust. Human beings mangled, raped, children murdered, cities burned from one end of Africa to the other, from the north, the south, the east, the west, the best of our ancestors plundered, slaughtered, and raped, while cannibals known as European scholars added insult to injury, stepping out the tales of Preston John, Golden Molly, and Brilliant Timbuktu. And in their place, the urine, the vomit, and the stench of filthy lies. A monster was born from this encounter with these European savages. Africans, victim of Holocaust, became the primitive Negro, a childlike, simple creature, half-naked, unspoiled by culture, while Europeans, bearing the white man's burden, led mankind into new realms of art, culture, and science. So it was, and so it would always be. Now these European scholars with their acid pens, they attacked black history like the Klan attacked the black church, stamped out the tales of Egypt and Kush, reclaimed our forebears as dark-skinned whites, renamed Africans niggas, Europeanized ancient history, making all achievement product of blonde-haired, blue-eyed Aryan heritage, so that step by step, inch by tragic inch, immortal Africans, pharaohs, priests, scientists, candaces, griots, disappeared and were replaced by a simple primitive, living in an eternal dream time, infamously known to all posterity as the nigger. The rape, kidnapped African and chain soon lost all humanity, became merely chattel as the slave ships appeared like buzzards, like a pack of wolves, like a plague of locusts off the coast of Africa. Elmina Castle and other slave forts arose like ugly warts upon the rich brown skin land. The slave fort, the factory of oppression, where the myriad hordes of the thousands, no, the hundreds of thousands, were processed through hell and resurrection, through the middle passage, into this nightmare that they call the New World. Now everyone knows the story since then. The overwhelming seas of cotton. The plantation after plantation, the endless seas of the white foam picked by black hands extended from last guard bodies, the plantations in Haiti, Jamaica, Brazil, Trinidad, Puerto Rico, Cuba, South America, and here in the U.S. South. The plantation, the new factory of oppression, where Red Butler and Scarlett O'Hara fanaticized about being New World royalty while millions of warm black bodies bent over cotton, tobacco, and sugar cane in Dixie, in the Black Belt, the Tidewater land, where the soil was fertilized with human sweat and centuries of human blood, in the land of Magnolia, where the sad songs were sung, in the land of the poplar tree, where our lynched and mutilated fathers hung, the burning cross, the rebel yell, those terror nights of kerosene that filled our children's dreams with real boogeymen from them rednecks that their stricken eyes had seen. Land of oppression, the burning crosses and the lynching trees. Land where our people struggled just to be free. Now after civil wars and reconstructions, betrayed again by the Yankee capitalists, re-enslaved, euphemistically called sharecropping. But we created a culture, rediscovered songs, customs, and lifestyles, and religion, and became a new people, a nation in captivity, the African-American nation, the African-American people in our black belt rooted in the rich red earth. Now, we struggled into the 20th century with W.D. Du Bois, Niagara, NAACP, the great Garvey, Pan-African prophet saying, Up, you mighty race! We heard in the U.S., the Caribbean, and the beloved colonized motherland. A people, a race, struggling to grow, becoming workers and leaving those cotton and cane fields and coming to the Harlems of the world. 
a battered, brave, determined people, strong men again, accompanying our queen and our queen mothers, Ida Wells, Mary Bethune, Adele Moore, Clara Mohammed, Betty Shabazz, Amy Garvey, Rosa Parks, Angela Davis, Asada Shakur, and listen as Margaret Walker sings all these beautiful anthems for my people, the great African, having survived a rebirth in the diaspora, far from the cradle land, pyramid builders turned workers, warriors, teachers, poets, singers, Dr. Ben, Willis Huggins, Doc, John Jackson, Asa Hillier, William Hansberry, Carter Woodson, J.A. Rogers, Niall Akbar, the new master teachers who will elevate the race, rebuild those pyramids of knowledge, fulfill the dreams of the prophets and the martyrs, Adam Powell, Mega Evers, Malcolm X, Dr. King, Fred Hampton, Mark Clark, George Jackson, Featherstone, the holier warriors, singing while we struggle. Dancing in prayer, hooking and bobbing and weaving like Muhammad Ali when he was the people's champ of all mankind. With the blues people and the jazz players as we hear Miles Davis playing that Coltrane spiritual song to the birthing of the soul of a new world are coming. Now from the pyramids to the projects, for over 10,000 seasons, we are strong. We go upwards and outwards with a new vision to greet this new century. And from the pyramids, from the projects, and from the projects to the stars, we will advance with liberation, a struggle of our rising tide. And with our sacred children, we will greet that rising sun. We are one. We are one. The living, the dead, and the unborn. Asante Saka. I was